is being left open. So now Top Esports have a choice. Do you lock in something like the Wukong when jungle has been pinched with both Vine Maokai, or do you go for this? I think this is the right choice because I think this champion is honestly just too strong. Also opens up other potential AD carries to come out like we saw with the Kogma in day one. So now falls in LNG's court. Yeah. They're going to get their hands on this Wukong for sure. Uh, and then I, I wouldn't, I, I would just expect the Aphelios to come out alongside it. Yeah, the Aphelios comes on through Wukong as well. The question is, what do top esports play with the Milio? Because it's what, it's in a spot where you can play almost anything. But Lucian Milio has actually been an incredibly strong duo lane. We said top esports comp like fit their style, and it's not like they couldn't play it. But it looks like it will just be kind of the handshake of the good. No, 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 no. Do you remember? Please don't. I want to remind everyone what my favorite Jackie Love quote of all time is, which is that he <laughs> loves playing Kogma because Kogma is the only AD carry who could deal damage once he dies. Jackie Love didn't say that in a memeing tone or that kind of way. He said it with his like same deadpan like stare and voice. And I love that. I love that that's how Jackie Love thinks about the game. But sadly, we don't get to see that today. Yeah. Jackie, Lo Jackie Love plays Cog more the way that a lot of people play Carthus, you know, where yeah, you're does. really going in to get maximum damage, and if you die, that's just part of it, you know. Uh, the Annie will be locked in alongside it. So very strong bottom lane, very strong mid lane. So it's like, honestly, if you're top esports, you're feeling good with this first rotation. Yeah, I, you're gonna have so much range to be able to play with coming out from from Emilio and, and a Jinx. And sure, Annie's like spell range might not be big, but even playing off like your autos and just trying to find room to set up for like a flash tibbers or something along those lines will be huge. So for top esports, we know they probably want to round out their comp with some other form of engage to be able to set them up. Tour for LNG now looking at mid laners. The Ari band coming out from Tez is quite nice. I'm kind of interested in where they go because I don't feel like we've seen a lot of like fluidity and like yeah. uh, like a lot of different mid laners coming to fruition just yet. We do still have things like the Syntra like open if they wanted some like honestly. early burst. Look, after the last yeah. game, maybe just get rid of the Lissandra. Jazz. Could yeah, could look to even just go the same route. We're gonna see here. They should be able to save top lane uh, counter pick if they want it. Or if they did just want to, again, get their hands on, like, a Scion or something like that to have a generic, strong front line and make sure top esports don't get their hands on it, uh, that also works. Yep, Scion locked in for Zika once again. Two games in a row for him. Uh, I love the little Teemo hover there. I feel like Teemo's a champion. I haven't even seen hovered in a long time. Like, he's not even the hover champion anymore. He used to be way back when. Uh, feels like a long time ago now, though. There's uh, top esports. They need to get a top lane and a jungler. The Karzix would be interesting. I feel like Karzix has only got better, and it was played at MSI Finals. I feel like it should be, theoretically, in an exceptionally strong spot right now. They do lock it in for TN. That and Nico have been two jungle champions. People have just been playing so much, but we haven't, again, haven't seen Nico and LPL jungle at all, and we've only seen Karzix in one game. Uh, for TS, I would really like them to round out with some better form of engage. They kind of hovered on the Orn Gragas another option i feel like nara would be a little bit too conditional sure you do have the mega nar and like the ulti there but could be hard to set up or enemy giving you position for that and now for lng the lissandra is something that you hit on which would kind of just put their comp i mean it'd be the same as game one right you have the same yeah. game plan you're looking for these picks if they wanted a bit more presence we talked about it if you wanted to play something like the syndra as well but looks like they will just keep scout being that big engage tool and just working in tandem with zika and tarzan Yep, so looks like uh, LNG quite happy with how game number one went, and I think rightly so, but uh, I didn't necessarily expect the, it, it to be, aside from the Wukong, it is literally the same composition. And fundamentally, I feel like Vi and Wukong, not that dissimilar in terms of how they function in a team fight. Like, you're kind of wanting to go in, ult the, the valuable target and cause disruption for the team. Uh, I think maybe Wukong slightly better in that regard, but anyway. Um, LNG fundamentally with the same game plan. Top Esports changing things dramatically though. Like, how do you even play this composition out? Because I feel like these champions, a lot of them have very different identities from one another. Yeah, I'm glad you, you pointed that out because when you look at it, it's like, I feel like playing this out could be could be a little bit hard. Like, you have a top and mid that can potentially try to set up that Kha'Zix, right? A lot of CC there. Kha'Zix brings the damage. You try to snowball that route, get in the enemy jungler's face, kind of just gives you control, and then you could try and snowball off that. But I feel like as the game goes on, it's like, okay, your Kha'Zix has to look for flanks because everyone on the side 
of LNG is very tanky, except for the Aphelios. You don't really have a great front line yourselves. Like, sure, Gragas and Annie will be able to do a bit and buy time for that Jinx, but won't be doing as much as, like, Lulu shields with Wukong and Scion. So, overall, I feel like from top esports, you either have to outplay later on, or a lot of it's going to be snowballing this Kha'Zix early with the CC and setup that Gragas and Annie provide. Yeah, we'll see if they can. We'll see if they can, like you say, snowball their way towards a victory. Tian kind of needs to show us something here in game number two on the Kha'Zix. Like we said, Lethality being buffed pretty much across the board. Kha'Zix was already getting played a lot during MSI, and a lot of people have the opinion that Kha'Zix was somewhat of a bait pick, but still had a lot of play even in the finals of MSI. So the pro players clearly disagreeing with that idea. And Tien, obviously wanting to get involved on that pick himself. We'll see how this other game goes because Mark and Jackie love, I think, the biggest difference in how they're going to have to play this one out. Yeah, they really are. Again, when you're playing like the Jinx and then especially with the Milio, which is really about setting up a hyper carry, giving you more range to play with, buying space force, having things like the heals uh, and, and cleanse to be able to set up, you're really going to be relying a lot on Wayward. Is ooh. This is quite big. Tien actually has to start E just to survive this one. Even which... his potion used. This is a really rough start, actually, for Tien. Like... It doesn't. Kha'Zix leveling E to clear the jungle, that ain't good. It's like a 15 second cooldown or something. He's got absolutely no damage to work with. Wayward, gonna have to help him with the blue buff. And Zika moving Just in look at to it. try and make it even harder. I mean, he's losing. He's losing to the blue buff right now. He's gonna have to smite. Yeah, that was. Uh, that is not the start you want as TS. And now, I mean, he's just gonna be behind, right? Tarzan always gonna have some tempo to be able to play with. They know exactly where he is, but I don't really know how much that does because when you when you look across the board, I don't feel like in terms of like 2v2s and setups that LNG kind of have better across the board. They have more CC to work with. They have some solid burst. Even Kha'Zix is a champion who typically wants some levels, wants some gold under his belt before you really be able to start to be that assassin that people think of. You know, wait for level six to come in, have that ulti, the isolation damage comes through. And now the fact that he's set behind in terms of time, uh, yeah, top esports. Yeah. Could could be looking at a 2-0 for LNG. I don't, you know, it's only two and a half minutes. Whoa, only two whoa, and a half, whoa. It's only a start. I want to overreact much. I want to overreact. <laughs> Let's wind it in just a little bit here. Uh, yeah, he is. But they're uh, not going to Worlds. He, they're done. He, they're, their season's <laughs> over. <laughs> Top Esports complete frauds, Lyric 2023. <laughs> Um, yeah, he is half a camp behind, so I think it is pretty done for Top Esports at this point. pretty over, man. Um, yeah. Oh, God. So, yeah, moving down to the bottom side of the map. Skipping the look, wolves, skipping the chickens. Look. It's hard for Kha'Zix to play. Tarzan still has his potion. How is this not over? Well, um, because they've got Milio, that's how. <laughs> if in doubt, just lock in the most broken champion in the game. Uh, I will say, Jackal over the team fights. He's going to be a menace. Like, I don't know yeah. if, you, if you've been living under a rock and you haven't played in the game with Milio yet. Hang on. Uh, I'm going to hold that thought because Tarzan going to jump onto Tien here. Uh, Tarzan does not win that 1v1, I don't think, but everyone else moving over is going to have first movement. Rookie's basically oom, so decided not to fight that one. Yeah. Tarzan also having confidence because the passive right, the stone skin building up that armor, knowing... Uh, can definitely buy time and then allow for the push to come through and then the follow-up from his team. So gets the first scuttle, gonna try and make his way towards top for now with the help of Scout's push. Should be able to guarantee both of them and it looks like Tien won't even go for a contest. Right now clearing his Raptors just to try and stay on par in terms of farm. Yeah, after that start, he, he is just gonna have to concede the early jungle essentially and, and just go for his Wolves here, which is fair enough. Get a recall off, get yourself a serrated Thurk and then go from there. Gromp respawning as well. He clears that incredibly quickly. So he could even go clear Gromp now just so the top quadrant is respawning at a similar time next time he goes around. Yeah, it does have some options to play with. And the more the more I look at like the drafts and just kind of how slow this game is, I'm really just interested to see how TS play out later fights. It is TS, so you know, I, I feel like you still kind of know what to expect in terms of the scrappiness and the brawliness, but It'd even be really cool if they just try to make plays elsewhere, right? Like you have like T 
Tien and Wayward maybe roaming towards mid or the enemy jungle. You look to invade. And maybe Jackie Love just kind of helps with the pick potential with the Super Mega Death Rocket, right? Yeah, true. And then you kind of look to play it out that way to try to find some semblances of an advantage. Uh, TS's damage is incredibly high late game, right? It's just about kind of the setups that they find to be able to get those opening kills. Yeah. I feel like when Gragas is your main form of hard engage, aside from, I guess, Flash Tibbers as well, like, can be tough to to find those opportunities. I do want to go back to the point I was going to make before about like Milio. Like if you've been living under a rock, you haven't really played much with or against Milio, or you just heard it was broken and have been banning it every single game since. Um, yeah, it does not only like crazy damage, a lot of sustain and all of that good stuff, but also it increases the range of your AD carry, the cozy campfire, increases attack range. So things like Caitlyn, Cogmore, Jinx, these champions that already have exceptionally long range, like, they become impossible to deal with. I'm pretty, Caitlyn certainly can, Cogmore can. I don't know about Jinx, but I believe with Max Q, they can hit tower from outside of tower's range with the cozy campfire. It's absolutely nuts. So late on in the game, when we've got Jinx versus Aphelios, Jinx already had the range advantage, plus cozy campfire. Gala shouldn't be able to get hits in. Tien will be found by Tarzan again. I mean, Tarzan's reading him like a book. Yeah, Tarzan, once again, having that same form that he's had. We talked about LNG have been so good. Is... <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, Zika, we, we see you. Gets in there, clears the wave. A bit of a hindrance to Wayward, making it so he can't look for the recall and has to clear these oh, out right he's away. He's going to proxy further. He's going oh, between yes. the towers for the next wave as well. <laughs> Zika, he's like, oh, you want to reset? Okay, you can reset. I'm just going to farm like underneath your inhibitor tower for the next minute, because I already know Tien's bot side anyway. And a Man, lot, I was gonna say, a lot of this it. coming out from Tarzan, right? Tarzan with the right read, spotting Tien, and then allowing Zika to play like this. Tien is here. Looks like no one wants to mess with this Jack Scion, which I respect. He's big, he's I level mean, seven, he's intimidating. He is a train. He's literally a train. Like, do you really want a 1v1 a train? I don't think so. I, guess I don't think depend. any person in history has ever 1v1 to train a one. What's, uh, you know, I feel like Thomas the Train, maybe 1v1. Thomas the Tank Engine. Thomas the Train? Yeah. Are you, are you, are you kidding me right now? <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I was always a Gordon guy, to be honest. Always a bit of a Gordon oh, really? guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? He's, he's like Thomas. He's blue as well, but actually, no, he's not. He's green. What am I saying? I was going to say, maybe he's I'm, green. Maybe I'm I was not like a Gordon he, guy after all. I felt like he, he was the creepier one. What? Let's be real, though. They were he's all He's bigger creepy. than the other ones. He's a big train. Everyone, yeah. Every kid loves big trains. But the faces. I like the faces. I, I also think that the that little bit of pop of the fat controller laughed. You are wrong. I think he's one of the greatest things ever. Tarzan thinks picking off Wayward is the greatest thing ever, but Tien has jumped out to find Scout, who's trying to survive. I don't think he's gonna first blood for the hunter in the jungle. Finally comes through the aggressive play. Tien managing to pick it up. This is exactly where you would want it, right? On your Kha'Zix, already has a serrated Dirk in, in pocket, and now they're gonna really easily be able to turn this into the Herald. With Tarzan being low, he has the back. Doesn't even have Cyclone up anyway. So it'll be a, a I guess not even a free objective. They, they get more off of it. So now I'm curious to see where they'll use it. I would still expect bot once again. You've also already gotten a plate down there. We'll go straight into the replay. A uh, scout and Tarzan wanting to try to contend with this. They get wayward a little bit low, but it gives the opening for Tien to just jump in right past Tarzan, make his way onto scout. Now with no ult, no flash, it just leaves him a sitting duck for Tien. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing, right? They used everything on Wayward. Wayward's like, okay, <laughs> I'm okay with this. I'm Gragas. I've got a Barmy Cinder. I am absolutely chilling. So, gets away with it. Scout will at least get himself a plate, but it does feel like a consolation prize at this point. And we asked, how are top esports going to approach this game? Well, it's a solid start, finding themselves some scraps to work with. No, no neutral objective being up for quite a while either. I mean, Dragon's still three minutes away, so our eyes really just going to be about where this Rift Herald drop 
does come through. Yeah. Top would be pretty meaningless. Worth mentioning as well that, like, look at the bottom line CS difference. Like, Jackie yeah. already with a big, big lead down there. So if you wanted to continue to uh, really push that Jinx, who already has a plate, already has done a bit of damage to that tower, like, that could be a really big option. I 100% I agree. And a lot of that going down to what you said earlier about the W coming through from Melio is it kind of lets you just slowly went out more and more through these trades and the enemy AD carry honestly has no option like you kind of just have to accept the free damage coming through you or you back up too far get zoned off your wave and your life becomes a living hell as, as we can see on our screen right here yeah you really you really can't trade into this and like Aphelios is like aha I have Calibra I have the range advantage of Milio is just like I have a campfire what are you gonna do we're, we're singing songs we're cooking schmalls and it's a magical uh, campfire that follows you around it's crazy it's a it's also adorable and not only does it give you range it also gives you healing during the trade so it's basically impossible to lose the trades Harold will come down to the bottom side Jagulov got an auto in on that tower so should guarantee himself a bit of gold from this charge. Mark wants to stay at least far enough away. Yeah, there we go. It just goes to Tien and Jackie Love. A great little start here for Top Esports. This is the lead that they were looking for last time. 2,000 gold ahead at 11 minutes with only a single kill. All right, pretty much most of this gold lead is going to be on Jackie Love, so he should be getting a pretty nice space soon. And then we're going to be coming to a point where we are talking about Next Dragon, right? And the fact that they already have Pryo and Push in bot side, we've seen them glance over mid a few times. The rookie has been having some, the better end of these recent trades. I think it should open up for TS to be the team that's favored to pick that one up. And now that we have first items coming online. And like I said, it is League of Storm Razor these days. Hell, we have a Storm Razor and a Ghost Split. The two items that I see people complain yeah. about the most. So, I was TS to say, locked yeah. and loaded. Like, we were saying, we want to see more Ghost Blade. Well, Tien, he's, he's there. He's right on board for that game plan because it's locked in. 73 CS against the 82, but that kill making all the difference for him as uh, it looks like Tarzan maybe headed to, I mean, could be Triforce, could be the Sundra. You assume Sundra at this point. Uh, but it's definitely going to be Tien with the advantage for the time being. The question is, can they consistently find those like little scraps that we saw before, right? Because it was Ooh. hard to do when LNG are aware of it. I'm trying to set up some kind of trap play for Wayward here. I, I also like this, right? Because this does a few things. One, you, you dodge out on the 2v2 matchup that you've been heavily struggling in. So you get to funnel more gold on the Gala. And I mean, Scion will be fine in that 1v2. Sure, Gragas will as well, but the this is only a net positive for LNG because it just means you're just dodging out on that 2v2 that you were losing out on. Sure, you give up Dragon, but Top Esports had Pryo in control over the bot side anyway, so they would have gotten Dragon regardless. Yeah. Yeah, so smart play from LNG, getting themselves a way to grab some Golden Gala, and it's enough for him to now finish that Storm Razor. So returning onto the map, and it looks like he will go up towards that top side once again, as uh, the Drake will be finished off there. And Tien to grab that one. So it's a Drake apiece, and it will be an Ocean Soul. So very valuable Drakes for the rest of this game. You would expect, you would expect though at this point that Jackie Love and Mark, if they stack up a big wave here, they might be able to just finish this tower off in the bottom side. Oh yeah, I mean it's just a matter of time, right? Whether whether it's now or maybe like two waves later, this turret will go down. LNG should get the same thing on top side, but will take them longer, especially with Wayward having something like the cast to be able to like e easily try to like dissuade the wave. But it looks like for TS, they might even just be fine giving this one up as Tien's actually posturing around mid, as, like you said, top they want to get this turret. They, they might get Zika as well. The turret going to be very low. He's desperately trying to clear those minions away. A couple oh, more autos Mark. will do the trick. Mark blocking the escape, and they're going to get the bonus kill onto Zika. Look at LNG on the minimap as well. While this happens onto Zika, you can see they're going to try and answer onto Wayward. Zika buying as much time as he can, but Tien finishes the job. Wayward trying to escape. Plates have now fallen off. There were two remaining on that top tower. So Gala will finish the tower, but misses out on 250 gold. And it's the time we talked about. You can see Wayward is no ult anymore. Wayward using the cask on that last wave, able to buy time, making it so they not only get bot lane to her first, but that same play isn't repeatable. Wayward is time to back off. And things go slightly up for top esports. But again, LNG kind of knew something like this would happen. Like you were opting out of changing size, which means you had to recall. You had to take time to go towards top side to where TS were just unloading on bot lane turret the whole time. 
But yeah. this way, LNG still ended up losing less than they might have otherwise if they kept Gala and Hung down in that bottom lane. The one issue that they've got is they've all just reset from that top side as Herald is now spawning. And Jackie Love, Mark, they've got that tempo advantage. They move in to try and set up for potentially a Herald take. We could have a 5v5 on our hands, honestly. You can see Scout already moving across the map. Wayward has the TP available. And now top esports, I mean, they've been the ones in the driver's seat, right? But you can see Zika and the kind of help he's getting. Scout? He tries to go for it. Ghost on either side burnt there as Gala will be able to just hit onto this tower. That should be a tier one taken. Nicely done there by LNG Zika. Already basically <laughs> invincible. Dragulo hit him so many times and only half HP. As, uh, you know, trying to kill a tank. He's already, he's got a last whisper. How does he do so little damage? You know, I, I'm actually surprised. I think he's doing a solid amount of damage more than I expected. I think the last, the last, last whisper second is good, but our top is going to be caught up by Scout now. They try and make something happen. Oh, great little body slam there. But Tarzan's into the back line. Jackie Love in trouble. Backing away, though. Keeps himself safe as the clone buying space. Zick of the next target. As shots come out, Scout the target. Rocket lands, and he will go down. There's one reset. Jackie Love starting to pop off. Tibbers playing bodyguard as Gala moves forward. He wants to make the hero play once again, but he doesn't have the damage this time. Zick is still going somehow. And this kind of gives me flashbacks to 2020, where even if it looked like, hey, top esports don't have as good a front line as like enemy squads, top esports bread and butter was the kiting, was Jackie Love able to just tether that range perfectly. Now we see Jackie Love pretty much untouched after the initial engage from the fight. And top esports, once again, do go up from the fight itself. So great position to be in when we kind of question how fights would go the longer the game contends. It all starts here. LNG want to start the fight, but Wayward making it so Scout initially gets stunned. Tarzan tries to Bacala, not really having the ability to follow up, especially when look at Rookie and Tien in their position. They're threatening off to the side constantly, which means LNG can't walk forward. Damage comes through, Wayward flashes in, and they're able to just really make miracles happen. Yeah. Rookie finding a really good opportunity there during the fight as Flametops deny Zika anything other than just arrival on the scene, but Zika does protect the tower. And you know, I feel like Rookie getting that kill onto Scout at the end of the fight. Fire is the counter to ice, surely melts him down. As Tien has found Scout and uh, it may be jungle versus mid lane, but Car6 wins those. 100% now. <laughs> it looks like Top Esports just so badly want control of mid so they can finally just pick up this objective on the top half of the map. Looks like they should be able to do it as LNG won't even look to contend. But LNG, just like game one, I think showing good understanding of, hey, we can't win here, so let's look to the opposite side of the map. Let's try and get some control. Let's have Scout push out. Yeah. And with Dragon coming up in eight seconds, they should be favored for this, but they're also scared of giving Top Esports the opportunity to drop Herald in mid. That's true. And Rookie up on that top side right now, but he has teleport available. I think Top Esports might just give this Drake. But what can they get instead? You can see Rookie pushing up top lane. Like you say, Harold could be slammed down in the mid lane, but Tien not positioning like he wants to go for that right now. Oh, here we go, moves on over and will slam it. So this will be a tier one take in mid lane. Uh, LNG, nothing they can do about this one at this point. Because the Herald should just get the charge and that'll finish the tower off. And Rookie should be able to get the tier one on the top side as well. So top esports basically saying, look, you can have the Drake. We don't care about animal cruelty. What we care about is building cruelty as they smash through buildings across the map. They even get a second charge on the Herald. Still, ultimately, even with Rookie in the turret top, it'll just even out, right? LNG have already picked up the mid lane turret themselves. They just picked up Bot. Top Esports still having that gold lead from the kills they've gotten, especially the pl they were able to pick up earlier on. But luckily, LNG's macro has been good enough that they haven't really fallen out at all. No, great stuff from LNG. And I mean, like when you've got a list of players like this, when you've got players from EDG, from RNG of previous iterations, that their speciality was great macro, right? It makes sense that the the macro brain is still very much functioning on this squad. So good to see LNG, and especially with like this matchup, I think for a lot of people is like, what are these teams going to look like this year? What is Top Esports going to look like after quite a disappointing end? What is LNG going to look like after quite a disappointing end to spring? Both of them looking to prove themselves, and both of them 
playing very cautiously, it has to be said. Like, I kind of expect Top Esports to be a little more, you know, reckless, I guess, in a, in a classic yeah. Top Esports way. But it feels like both these teams are treating this almost like a playoff series. Right? And that's why, like, for anyone new coming in, like, wondered why we're supposed to, like, start of the split, even our top team's usually messy. There have been a lot of times where LNG specifically, but even top esports, you look at their scoreline and where they are on the standings early in the split, and you're like, honestly, these teams kind of don't deserve to be here. <laughs> kind of just relied on enemies being worse, throwing games, screwing up, but them also not looking good. But I feel like both teams have come into the split looking looking strong, like coming in with like relatively decent form. Uh, if this is their starting point, yeah, yeah. he's fine. So it, if this is a starting point, I'm just excited for the rest of the split. Yeah, absolutely. Like, uh, if it's only up from here, I'm excited. Oh, no. What it's never the only table. up from here. You just made me realize that much. <laughs> Actually, well, for these teams, it's usually down. It's usually down at some point. Well, that's good. At least the starting point is high. Maybe it's only slightly down from here, you know? Um, I want to see these guys against OMG. Not only because OMG beat them in playoffs, but also because, like, OMG is the kind of team that really pushes you and, like, tests what you're bringing to the table. So both of them quite happy to handshake how the early games are going in this series. And I feel like that's that's sort of the meta that we're in right now. And a lot of it, I mean, it was sort of the meta we're in at MSI with a couple of teams really challenging that and trying to be more aggressive. But it feels like there will be teams to test that later on. Rookie could look for the stun, but decides not to pull the trigger, not onto Zika. Look, Munch, I know this isn't the time because both teams are posturing, but let me sell you on an idea. I'm ready. I know you wanted to bring back, like, uh, threes in League of Legends, but let's bring back threes and change it to where now it is a map with three Nexuses, 3v3, and we have TS, LNG, and OMG going to the ultimate matchup. I'm going to be you totally in? honest with you. I am so in it hurts. Like, <laughs> yeah, right? I have never heard a better idea in my life. I am willing to quit my job and become a developer at Riot if that's what's necessary to make this happen. I will personally manage this project uh, to make it come to fruition. And we can do an opening show match between those three teams as like our, our grand unveiling. I'm, I'm here for it. I'm 100% in. I'm no longer a League of Legends 5v5 caster. I'm a League of Legends... 3v3v3 caster. I'm just saying, it's sounds official. like an absolute banger. That could even be the first Worlds. We don't even have a tournament set up. Just that matchup is the World Finals, and they yeah. get their own title that we get to decide the name for arbitrarily. But I need to think of something, because the only thing that came to mind wasn't really broadcast appropriate. Hmm. Okay, well, I'll let you work on that. I'll let you ruminate okay, bring us back that to the game. Bring us back to the game. I got As, uh, we've got 45 seconds until the Ocean Drake comes up. It's three to zero, and Top Esports want to make it four. Looking for Zika, but won't find him for now. TN, he's being sneaky this game. I feel like constantly being sneaky this game as uh, we'll just throw some rockets and return away. But hey, that's what, 11 gold he got from that one. So who's, who's the real winners here? Crampton comes out from Gala, trying to fight for mid-prio again, but it's kind of just going to be neutral at this point. Is LNG having to back away? Drake up at 15. And Top esports right now, they've got full control. Yeah, doing a nice job having push in bot. Looks like their wave is set up to push in top side as well. You know, should put a bit more pressure on LNG. So I really like the setup coming out from them here, but they always have to be wary, right? Zika can open up with all set up for an engage to come through, but it seems like for now, LNG might just back off. But no, <laughs> they instantly back off and try to make their way right back to mid. Yeah. I thought and maybe I they try to bluff a Baron, but they don't even want to do that. Man, this feels like hyper late game scenario, right? Where it's like, okay, jungler goes and does dragon because we need four people to contest mid because the other team is going to try and threaten Baron through mid prio. It's like, right, guys, right. we're 23 minutes in and it's two drakes apiece. Like, can we calm down? <laughs> like, what? fight, fight for it. I want to see exactly. team fight, guys. I, I was fully expecting like the push and pull of like LNG posture towards top and act like they can do Baron and top esports follows and they back off and we do that for like two or three minutes. Like, I want to see what's been happening in scrims. If this is like the level of respect coming in and the level of like mind games of like, oh, well, we're going to solo Drake and, and contest the Baron at, like just for Drake number two. I, I want to see some of the, the wacky stuff that we've been seeing in scrims because I, I bet there are some intense games going on. Yeah, definitely has to be is now three items. 
going to come out for the Kha'Zix with Edge of Night being finished up. So going to have a bit more survivability coming in with that passive and a little bit of health it offers. Still the big member on TES. I mean, hell, even Jackie Love might only be on two items himself. But again, I feel like going straight towards that Lord Dom is yeah. really going to help when you are up against well. the Scion. I think that'll be IE finished. Yep. Oh, he went for. Um, can reposition then in the fights and get that execute as well. I love how they reworked IE to be a mythic and people still prefer Gale Force. Like, Gale Force is just such an insanely good AD carry item that everyone's still just like, yeah, we're, we're still good Gale Force. I mean, you think about, again, the items people have been buzzing over, like like Gale Force, it gives, it gives strong burst, it gives mobility. Ghost Blade, burst, there's mobility there. Even like Stormraiser to a degree with the mobility, since you do get that movement speed when you do proc the, the charge, which I know it's not much, right? It's only for one second, but still uh, great to be able to just kind of I mean, follow up on the damage you do. It's definitely got burst. If there's one thing Stormraiser's got, yeah. it's burst. Yeah. So, yeah, you, you're absolutely right. It's, uh, I mean, mobility has always been one of the most underrated stats in League of Legends. It's like the Cloud Drake debate, right? Where I think a lot of people undervalue what that stat brings. Rookie's in trouble at the top side, gets locked up. Gala's in trouble, though, TN! Almost one shots Gala, and then Gala flips it right back around at him. Rookie rocket belts, but it's to no avail. And LNG have found themselves a pick. It's onto the enemy mid laner, and Baron's open. Rookie's probably so confused. He's just trying to push out his wave up and top, and all of LNG coming out of Tribe Rush. Now gonna try and turn this into Baron. <laughs> Top esports are like, oh, 4v5 at Baron, that's our specialty. Just charge straight at them. Oh, TN, that looks real juicy on the top side. Tarzan Gala both solo, and Zik has been abandoned by the squad. They were born in the 4v5. They were molded by it. They didn't see a 5 at Baron until they were already men. And now LNG, they're going to have to come back. They're going to have to try and contest this objective. Tarzan, can he manage to oh, find the steal? We're flipping it, aren't we? We're absolutely flipping it. I Tarzan flip it. over the wall. Rookie teleporting in. Tarzan's into the pit. <laughs> Here he gets it. Scouts there alongside him. The double spike comes through. But at what cost? Scouts definitely going down. There's a double kill. It's four members dead. Gala alone. And you know Tien's going for it. You know he can't get away with this one. Tries to turn it around. But the flash from Wayward. What a beautiful play. And top esports with an ace. This is our LPL. Baron flips, aces by the enemy team, dives coming through. And now TES, again, they might have lost out on the Baron buff Wait, itself, they but can be able to they push down seconds. through the base. No carries are up. Okay, they're not going to go for it. They're not going to go for it. I got a little excited there. I've seen top esports go to end the game in situations say. like that before. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you have. And uh, yeah, top esports is specifically, right? That's the team who would go for that play. But now. They're, they're tempered. They're going to go by and try and get some more items. I'm interested to see how much gold Jackie Love does have. But I guess we go straight to the replay of this second half. They opted into the flip because they know they have more members, right? Rookie going to be able to TP. And they have CC, so they know they could even start a fight. They try to go in here, but Tarzan just winning out. This might not even coming out from Tien in time, but then able to chase them down. Tien going to use the blast plant. Rookie just outright flashing in. And here, Gala, I don't know, maybe just not expecting Wayward to come through because he turns back and tries to get some nice damage onto Tien. I think as was thinking, like, look, if I just keep running in a straight line, Tien is going to he's gonna get his lead to kill me, so I, maybe I've got to turn around and try to kill myself, you know. Um, double smite as well from LNG. Really, really nice. Scout using that spell book uh, to, to guarantee the objective. However, everybody died. So <laughs> the plus 23 gold Baron power play there uh, coming through from LNG. Not even a negative one, just just 23 gold. Nice, nice. Good stuff. Uh, so now, with the supers in the mid lane, there's going to be pressure on LNG. This is only a third Drake for either team, but they don't want to give this one up. They want to fight for this one. Zika starting to feel the damage. Jackie Love is real strong now. And now for TS kind of pulling back a little bit, I think trying to invite LNG in, which will then give Rookie the perfect opportunity to get the Tibbers onto the back line. Looks like Tien was yeah. hoping to find a bit of a flank angle himself, but LNG, they don't even want to risk giving the opportunity over, which I think is the right call, right? I mean, you go a little bit too far forward, you not only lose Drake, you lose the whole game off of one misstep. All right, now towards the bottom side for top esports. 
And it's looking like, I don't want to jinx anything. It's looking like we might be going to three on this one, Jordan, as uh, Tarzan gets out with his life. Now, in game number one, Gala was around here, and he basically solo dived to make things happen, and he's not far from doing it on the opposite side. This time, way with the target as Tarzan does get the follow-up. Zika knocked back, but it doesn't really matter as Tien wasn't around. Scout trying to find the flank, and it's a great little pick from LNG. Yeah, honestly, could have gone even better. I was actually scared for the other members of TS once, once the cast came through and it's like, okay, Scion is now closer to your carries. Lissandra still has all of her engaged tools. But luckily, Top Esports managed to get out. Are they gonna go for this one? Scout actually using a ghost, but I don't think he can catch the Kha'Zix. He's real sneaky. Drops the ward, keeps himself safe. Won't even go for the Scuttle Crab, or will he? <laughs> Jumps back in for that one, realizing they can't contest rookies in the area. So, will be able to get out with his life. It's 5,000 gold lead. For Top Esports, they've got the three Drakes for themselves and no neutrals up for another couple of minutes. And I feel like this is where the LCK would uh, go into what's referred to as a lull state because realistically, I don't think these, with how tense this game has been, I don't think these teams are just going to fight for the sake of fight. No, it has been a bit of a, a drastic change up from what we would expect from TES. But again, a pleasant, a pleasant change. Honestly, with how well they've been looking, but I love how they just seem so content with just funneling more and more gold onto both Tien and Jacula because <laughs> Tien's only gotten bigger. He just finished Sherelda's. Runon's yeah. now coming out for Jacula, so he's even bigger too. Yeah. And yeah, I, I mean, see. for LNG, I don't know. I feel I just... like Top Esports just have more damage. I love how fast Tien is, despite the fact he's still only got his magical footwear. Like, he's not even upgraded his boots, and he's still, like, just as quick as everyone else on the rift. It's that ward, but he won't be able to find it. Is Zika taking some hits here. The CC is there. Can they finish the job? Rocket available for Jackie Love. The heal comes out at the last second there from Hung, and will save Zika's life. Tarzan in. It's a knock up onto Jackie Love. But the rest of the team can't follow up for the time being. Good Sonya's to keep himself safe as Gala. Hit with a zap. And Tien buying space to the backside, keeps himself alive. Tarzan going as well for Top Esports. They find in the moment Gala alive as Sion just goes straight between the goalposts. Close one here as Tien jumps back in. A double for Rookie. And once again, it's Gala alone. Once again, it'll be Gala going down. Tien flashes to cut through the enemy AD carry. And with Jackie Love alive, that's going to be game. Top Esports gonna look for the push. Beautiful team fighting coming from them. And we get to see why Emilio has been constantly banned because him with any 80 carry is a team fight win. It's absolute domination. And I have to say, what a treat today. Seeing this level of team fighting in week number one of the LPL, they're <laughs> already looking like this. It's beautiful. See you later, Hung. <laughs> you shouldn't have respawned, that was your mistake as the Nexus will fall, and Top Esports show us that they won't go down without a fight. Man, Tien on Kha'Zix was absolutely disgusting. And hell, that was even with Tarzan having a few good early reads on him, right? Like spotting him out. Yeah. He got kind of snubbed on the level one as well, but comes back in, has a great carry performance. And a lot of it, we kind of talked about, hey, like, you know, if this game goes even later on, it could be quite hard. We need to snow get these kills on the Cossacks. They did, they did yeah. exactly that, but it wasn't even necessarily through like, a, okay, we need to gank mid and like force Tibbers here and Cossacks comes in. It was like, no, it was just kind of smart decision making coming out from Tien in terms of like, okay, how to approach these fights. Also a bit of LNG, like the one fighter on Herald, right? Using everything on the Gragas gives Tien the opening, but still constantly finding himself in the right angles. And I love how he'd play off to flanks. You'd be like him and Rookie, like waiting in the wings and then them like calling, like back up a little bit more, trying to force LNG out so we have these angles. And Tien really delivered. On top of it, I mean, we saw Jackie Love again. He was just untouched a large amount of those fights. Yeah, Jackie Love looking fantastic today. Uh, that jinx. I mean, we did talk about how Jinx functions in these fights and the amount of range that you have, the amount of freedom that you have in these fights, it you can look good, but the way that Jackie Love is positioning, dodging everything, like making sure he stays safe and still managing to squeeze that damage out, like really, really impressive stuff to see. So great game from Jackie Love, great game from Top Esports. And once again, I'm loving this like very slow, cautious start to the split for both teams, like Top Esports especially. I didn't expect this level of like 
I guess, control out from the squad. A squad that's known for being hyper-aggressive. A squad that's known for making individual plays just for the sake of making an individual play. It's good to see them all on the same page. It's good to see a, a few players that, like Tien Wayward, that had a bit of a rough split last split, looking good so far. Yeah. Again, I'm I'm honestly so impressed by the series. I'm happy that we're going all the way to three games and kind of get to see who... Again, it's going to take this kind of first pivotal win of the split against a team who it kind of is in that same tier as you both did finish. I guess LNG finished one place higher in playoffs before they fell down to OMG, but kind of in that same ballpark range. So now looking at next game, right, we can kind of wonder how things are going to change. Though I'm already sure we probably won't see something like Emilio again. You wonder how, like, if now LNG are going to have to worry about something like a Kha'Zix or some of these more niche picks that really haven't been as explored coming into LPL just yet, like like how that's going to influence the meta and the drafts going forward, right? Because you were hitting on Kha'Zix, especially at MSI as a pick that was already starting to come in, should theoretically be stronger now. We haven't really seen much of it, and maybe this game could be a catalyst for that to happen. Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like it's one of those picks that there must be a lot of in scrims where it's a very different jungler to the meta junglers. And it's a very different style of play to what the meta junglers are bringing. So I feel like it's one of those ones where I bet there's a bunch of teams that have been like, yeah, Kha'Zix jungle, let's try that out. Have no idea how to play with a Kha'Zix jungle. Have no idea what to do when your jungler's not just ulting the enemy AD carry. And so just abandon it completely. Top esports though, I mean, every single player on this roster, extremely experienced, extreme amount of hands available there. So very willing to bring up a carry jungler. Yeah, and again, it was it was cool to see. So I hope next game just kind of brings the same flavor. I'm going to keep asking for the same thing. I'm going to keep asking for Nico Jungle. We probably still won't get it, but these damage numbers are not surprising really whatsoever. As once again, another incredibly low damage Emilio game coming out, but that's not what you pick him for. No, it's not. No, it's absolutely not, Mark doing his job on Emilio. He was setting up campfires for everyone. He was playing a little bit of football, like kicking whatever those things are at the enemy, which was all very nice. And even a bit of a moat spam at the start of the game. Oh, what more could you ask for? Um, yeah, fantastic stuff though from Top Esports. And I think as well, like after game number one, I was a little bit nervous about like, you know, it's week number one, like how have things improved internally? Because there was a few rumors about things in terms of the player side behind the scenes, not necessarily people meshing, not necessarily getting on. It does feel like, you know, they've lost the game. They've come back still looking good in game number two. So glad to see it's not like mental boom situation here in week number one, because it would be, it'd be real dicey if it was. Uh, we're going to jump into 